Welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to improving the security of software supply chains with Notary Project. I'm Toli Mladenov. I'm a principal product manager at Microsoft. Uh, Milind, I'm a senior engineer at Amazon AWS. Okay. So uh, today we'll go kind of through the update of uh, Notary Project, what happened over the last six months. So we'll start with some overview. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, release of the tooling that uh, uh, we had. We'll talk about the features, so folks who are not familiar with Notary Project can learn a little bit more what they can use it for. Uh, we have a couple of demos and uh, we'll talk about our roadmap. Uh, at the end, you have the opportunity to ask any questions. Uh, Notary Project is a set of specifications and tools intended to improve the security of supply chains for software. Uh, I would like to talk a little bit about our kind of philosophy and how do we think about the, the supply chain as well as how we hear customers are actually approaching the, the security. So the first thing is smooth transition. So when we say smooth transition, we understand that everybody wants to go and look at the latest and the greatest, but most of uh, the customers that we talk with, they already say, oh, look, I have some infrastructure, like whether it's infrastructure for managing keys, infrastructure for uh, even signing, uh, some kind of legacy signing uh, approaches. We would like to have a, an easy way without going and deploying a bunch of new things and, and setting a bunch of infrastructure to actually move to something more modern. But we also don't want to be locked into this legacy infrastructure. We would like to have a path that in the future we can use things like, for example, managed keys, or you may know it as a keyless signing, for example, something that Belint will uh, go and uh, demo later on. So that is one of the principles that we try to follow. So we provide really smooth transition for, for uh, our users. The next thing is uh, signature portability. So especially in the container space, what we learned is that you sign containers in one place and you may use them in a completely different place. A uh, typical example is like you pull the containers from Docker Hub as a base images that you use to build your application, right? And uh, whoever pushes the uh, images to Docker Hub, they need to be able to sign them. But after that, most probably what you do is you copy these images from Docker Hub into your own registry or you copy them from your own registry into some air gap environment. You don't need to go and actually resign again and again every time when you do a copy, right? Because you want to trust of what you acquired. So portability of signatures is another principle that we follow in our project. Granular trust uh, control is uh, another thing that uh, we are looking like, for example, who do you trust to? Do you trust everybody who published the sign image in Docker Hub or do you trust just certain publishers? Uh, how do you create these policies? Uh, how do you say, I trust for this signature, for this repository or for that signature from that repository? In Notary Project, we think how you can actually control this trust. Revocation control is another thing that actually uh, is important. Uh, how do you know that, for example, image that is signed once, it's still actually trustable? We have many examples where we discover that, well, this signed software was actually compromised. How can I invalidate these compromised images but still keep images that are still signed with the same signer but are valid and they don't have compromised uh, bits inside. Privacy is another thing. You are in complete control who signs, what keys you use with signing, and you don't need to expose that to external world. You, if you want to, you can, but you are not required to actually share with the whole world that I, as Toddy, signed this image for my internal use. And extensibility is another one. So extensibility not only in the, let's say, the signing formats. Uh, Notary Project right now supports two different signing envelopes. One is JWS, the other one is COSI. But you can add additional if, if needed and if use cases require. But also extensibility in the tooling. So uh, our CLI has a plugin model where you can go and develop your own plugins. And we'll talk more about this later on. So this is the philosophy of the uh, Notary Project and how we look at that. 
In August, we did a kind of a, uh, our uh, inaugural release. Uh, it included many things, and uh, we listed here. I'm not going to go into too many details in each one of them, but one thing that actually is important to know about Notary Project is that we have a specification that everybody can go and implement, and if they implement it, uh, the signatures that they create will be portable to other tools that other people are implementing. So you can just take the specification, implement the signing, and uh, not use anything that, for example, Notary Project delivers as bit. Or if you are interested to start going and using Notary Project tooling, we have a CLI that you can use and sign uh, container images at the moment, and we are looking in the future to provide other uh, signing uh, opportunities as well as we have, and apologize for my uh, notifications, we have um, uh, libraries that you can incorporate into your own bits or projects in order to, to, to generate notary project signatures, and we have a couple of adopters that are already doing that. Uh, another important thing, and I already mentioned that, is uh, we have two different uh, uh, signing envelopes, so you can choose between uh, JWS, which is a very common format. Uh, everybody knows that, but you can also choose a binary cozy signing, which is very uh, applicable to, let's say, um, not so powerful workloads. So cozy is used in IoT work, uh, uh, workloads, where you have very, actually, small compute workloads and it's very efficient format for that. Uh, one mo uh, very important thing that we also do did as our uh, uh, release is uh, we uh, in get involved with uh, uh, CNCF and their security teams. So we got a security audit and we also have a continuous first testing on every bit that actually we produce. Here are a couple of adopters, and I will not go into too many details, especially in the big logo names, but I will talk a little bit about, for example, Harbor. So Harbor integrates with Notary Project signatures, and if you use Harbor as a registry, uh, you will see, for example, which images pushed or artifacts pushed to the Harbor registry are signed with uh, Notary Project. Kiberno, uh, they have policies to validate images that are signed uh, with notary projects, so you can do admission policies with Kiberno for notary project signatures. Venify, they are, uh, if you are familiar with Venify, they are a company that actually does uh, uh, KPI infrastructure, and they have uh, uh, infrastructure for keeping signing keys, so they actually are developing a plugin for our CLI so they can use their own, own infrastructure. But there are more and more adopters that are actually using uh, Notary Project, and we are uh, talking with uh, many new customers and also other projects to, to get integrations. Let's go through a, a very small demo. Uh, what I will demonstrate right now is uh, uh, using GitHub Action to sign image which is local, uh, locally built even before I push the image to the registry. So this is a, a GitHub action. Uh, I will uh, kick off the build. Uh, it will take a couple of seconds until the, the build starts. Uh, it is very fast, and uh, we'll look at uh, the inv individual steps and uh, uh, what is happening there. So the build started. Uh, the first couple of things are uh, just setting up the environment. Uh, we have a, a viable. Uh, notation action. Notation is the CLI that uh, Notary Project produces. So you can go and on GitHub Marketplace, you can go and look for notation action and use it. So we have a couple of actions. One is for setting up notation for signing. We have sign action and we have uh, verify action. In this particular case, what I do is I build an image and uh, I use BuildX to export it into an OCI layout. So the OCI layout is laid out on the file system on the build agent. So you can see here, let me just pause it for a moment. So you can see here that this is the layout of the image itself. So the image did not leave the, the uh, build agent yet. So it is on the file system. Then you can see that um, we signed the image with notation and uh, 
Let me just move it a little bit. We can also list the signatures on the image. So everything is laid out on the file system. The image is not pushed. The signature is not pushed to the registry. Why is this important? So first is we constrain the uh, signing to the build agent. What that means is that I am not exposed to attacks, let's say, to the registry. Because between the time that I push the image to the registry and sign it, somebody may actually send me the wrong bits to sign. The other thing is I am not required to uh, go and uh, actually push the image to the registry. I may want to actually transfer this to an air gap environment in some other manner. So I can take the OCI layout and move it to the air gap environment. Okay, let's go back to the slides and uh, we'll talk about the features. So, Milin. Hi everyone, thanks Ari. So let's kind of recap on the features uh, that Tari kind of covered. Uh, so we have, you can sign and verify any OCI artifact. It can be container images, attestations, packages, files that you store in registry. Uh, we talked about portable signatures. Images are portable artifacts that can move from registry to registry. <clears throat> and we expect signatures to be portable too. You can have multiple signatures on these uh, artifacts uh, because you have multiple actors involved in software development and they can produce signatures on the same artifact. You have full control over the data being shared. What we mean by this is signatures and attestations are stored in the registry alongside the images and they have the same privacy level as your images. Uh, this is especially important for attestations because they can contain confidential data like uh, the identities or infrastructure or tool chain that you use to build your images. You can sign with your existing solutions. We'll get in depth with a demo on this. Um, you're able to integrate with your own organizational PKI existing signing solutions, third party uh, signing solutions as well. We have a flexible trust policy. Uh, we understand that you cannot go from, say you're not signing images, to signing images and turning on all the bells and whistles. Uh, it, it can be an incremental adoption. So we give you switches that allow you, uh, allow you to dial that slowly and get to uh, your, your required security posture. Uh, incidence response control is about uh, revocation control. We feel that revocation is a very important control. You can get started signing easily, uh, but when you have uh, incidences like signing key compromise, you want a control that publishers can use, uh, the publishers who have signed the artifacts, to indicate to all consumers of that artifact that this identity is no longer trusted. Artifact validity control is uh, acquired through a signature expiry. We allow you to uh, expire, set a custom expiry on the signature so you can control the lifetime of the artifact. This allows you to implement governance policies such as not trusting artifacts that are, say, older than six months. Uh, we have extensibility built in, which is uh, in, in three ways. The first is plugins. This is, these are changes that uh, you can do yourself. You can build plugins for notation, both for signing and extending verification logic. We are extensible for signature formats. We built the uh, notary project specification and notation tooling to support newer signature formats in future. We currently support JWS and COSI. We currently support X509 based identities. These can be CA issued end entity certificates, signing certificates, or they can be a, a signing service that signs on your behalf. And these are the two trust models currently supported and it's extensible to support other trust models as well. Uh, let's talk about experimental features. We have OCI 1.1 in experimental support that, uh, that enables you to have a better experience. Uh, OCI 1.1 allows you to uh, associate metadata with, Im with images uh, without relying on existing mechanisms like tags or indexes, which can clutter up the registry. You can sign locally without needing a registry. That, that was the demo that uh, Toddy did. So let's go through a short demo. Uh, 
All right. Actually, um, let's talk about, like in the reference architecture, how would you integrate notation uh, at different places? So here's a typical workflow where your building image is distributing and deploying it. And now we are introducing sign and validate steps. Uh, in, your, in your CI CD tooling, in the build step, you would install notation and integrate it for signing. You can, uh, you can have notation sign the image by providing the image URL and your key ID along with a signing plugin. And it'll sign the image, push the signatures to the registry, and they can, these signatures can move along, along along with the images uh, as using, say, uh, ORAS or any other open source tooling. In the deployment environment, you would have notation integrate with admissions controller, and this allows you to, you have trust policies which allow you to specify which identities are trusted to sign which artifacts. And when a deployment comes in, the admissions controller passes the image information to notation Notation fetches all the signatures associated with that image, uses the trust policy to determine if the image is signed with a trusted identity, and then you either allow the deployment or you can block the deployment. Uh, you, have, you have options such as strict enforcement, which will block deployment for untrusted images, and uh, you have audit policies which allow you to still deploy and you'll get like logged warnings. So I'll do a demo with AWS Signer. AWS Signer is a code signing service. It provides managed signing experience, which means you don't have to manage PKIs, keys, key rotation, et cetera, while signing. You just have an API, which allows you to create identities and sign with them and verify them. Uh, AWS Signer, you can use AWS Signer with an AWS account. Uh, signing images is free, and that allows you to use AWS Signer along with notation to sign your images. All right, so here I've already set up AWS CLI and notation along with the plugin. And we are using notation plugin list. You can see the Signer plugin. I'm saving that in the environment we're able to use later on. Here I'm creating a signing identity. This is called a signing profile resource in Signer, and this allows you to sign, and you can use the ID or ARN of this resource to do verification. So here I'm creating a signing profile with name Ben, and it is using the notation platform. You can see the signing algorithm there as part of it. Here I'm copying the ID of this identity, and setting an environment variable for it. This is the image I'm going to sign. I'm using a digest URL for the image. Here we are doing the actual step, notation sign the particular image. I'm using the plugin. This is the AWS Signer plugin. And the ID is just the resource that I just created called the, the signing profile called Ben. And this will sign the image and push it to the registry. I'm using the notation ls command to show me signatures associated with the image. There's only one signature, and you can use the inspect command to see the details of the signature. So here, you can see signed attributes, and you can see the certificate chain. In the next step, I'm, I have a policy which says for this particular image, use the strict verification. Uh, the trust store is signer, and I'm using the Ben Ben as the trusted identity. This is the signing profile unique identifier. I'm importing the policy into notation and verifying the signature. All right, so so we saw a plugin in action. Let's dig a bit deeper into plugins. So we have signing plugins and verification plugins. Signing plugins allow you to offload the cryptographic operation so that you can bring your own signing infrastructure, be it on-premise or KMS, HSM, or signing services. You can see a list of plugins that are already available. On the verification side, Notation will do the 
signature verification, and uh, it allows you to extend or bring your own custom logic for verification. There's a plugin available for Signer which uses this feature to uh, allow verification with custom identities, which was the signing profile in the demo, and allows granular revocation checks, so you can do per signature revocation checks. Back to you, Tori. Thank you. So we see what actually we can do currently with uh, uh, notation and uh, uh, notary project signatures, but uh, uh, we will not stop here. So we are looking at uh, uh, new things to add to increase the security of the signatures and also to enable other scenarios. Like for example, very often you know that certificates expire after a certain amount of time and the uh, signatures can, can break if those certificates uh, expire. I already mentioned that we are looking at uh, signing arbitrary blobs. Uh, right now, uh, notation uh, only can sign uh, artifacts stored in OCI reg registries. Those artifacts doesn't need to be only images, container images. We can push everything to OCI registry and sign it with notation. But uh, we would like also to have the ability to Again, coming back to the uh, build scenario, so when you generate any piece of software on the build agent and you generate SBOM, you should be able to actually sign both these pieces of artifacts uh, with notation. So we are targeting in December to have uh, uh, functionality in experimental phase to actually sign arbitrary blobs. Later in uh, 2024, we will add uh, uh, timestamp authorities uh, support. Uh, that will actually allow us to actually uh, have the signatures extended to uh, unlimited time, so as long as uh, um, you trust the timestamp authority, as well as tax signing. So we learned about interesting scenarios where you want to not only capture the, the, uh, the digest of the image as part of the, the signature, but also some additional metadata, which is as, uh, uh, the image has as properties at the time of signing. And normally, let's say, for example, for container images, when you build the image, you also assign a tag. It can be, a, uh, uh, as we call it, a floating tag. So this tag can be changed next time when you do the build but you want to capture this information for certain security scenarios to know like, okay, what was the state of this image when I signed it? And later uh, in uh, 2024, we would like to add additional attestation uh, support. So we're exploring different options for uh, all kinds of attestations that you, uh, either they will be standard attestations to the image or uh, artifact, as well as you can create your own custom attestations. And when we talk about attestations, so it's more standardized format because we currently support attestations. So you can go and actually uh, assign, a, a, attach SBOM to the image and sign this SBOM. You can attach additional metadata. So we are experimenting with things like, for example, provenance metadata or uh, lifecycle metadata for the images. Or if you want, you can go and actually attach currently a vulnerability report and sign it. We are looking at more standardized approach and to align more with other tools available on the market and in the community to uh, um, provide attestations. Uh, that was mostly it. So if you need more information, we have the links to the uh, Notary Project website uh, as well as Notary Project GitHub repository. So we are welcoming any contributions, any questions. Uh, we are very open to talk with uh, uh, customers and users of uh, uh, Notary Project and incorporate this, their scenarios. If you are interested about the basics uh, and uh, uh, more, to learn more about Notary Project, we did a, a very interesting podcast with uh, uh, Tanzo, um, uh, Whitney. Uh, she spent two and a half hours uh, with us and uh, we started from where Notary Project started with, how it evolved, uh, what are the benefits, so you can go and look uh, at that. And if you want to go uh, get in touch with uh, either me or Milint, uh, we have a link uh, to our LinkedIn profiles. Uh, we are happy to actually talk with you and we'll open it for questions. So if you have any questions, there is a microphone there. Uh, we'll be happy to answer anything in the remaining five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we have another 10 minutes for Q&A.
five, I believe, right? Any questions or? So we'll be here. If you want to talk with us, uh, we'll stay for another 10 minutes. We'll be happy to have any discussion. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks.